Look at this. See here, this isn't Photoshop or some sort of a fake. It's an actual book I've written over the last 14 months or so, and it's finally published. So in this video, I'll show you how to build the simplest C++ project with CMake, and I'll briefly introduce all the cool features of CMake that I explain in depth in this book. I'll have a little surprise for you at the end of this video. Let's get to it. If you ever worked with C++, you know that the compilation involves some work. It's not something that just happens or is taken care of by a universally accepted IDE. You'll either have to execute a set of commands to compile and link your code, or you have to use some build system like Make or Ninja. Since configuring those systems can get difficult rather quickly, it's great to use a higher level tool that will generate that configuration for you. This is exactly what CMake does. And since it is a widely accepted tool in the industry, it is also a de facto standard that you can learn once and use in many different projects and organizations. To create a CMake project, you'll need special project files written in a CMake language. Let's see this in practice. We'll be building a simple Hello World C++ application written in a Hello CPP file. So, Let's have a look. Our Hello CPP consists of include directive uh, with IO stream, and then we have a standard main method uh, that simply outputs our hello world to the console and returns zero. Nothing too fancy. To build this C++ project with CMake, we'll create a basic project file called cmakelists.txt, and it will need just three lines of code. CMake minimum required version. Which version we require for CMake? For this project we'll use 3.20. Um, then what is the name of our project? We'll name it hello. Then we finally add executable called hello as well and hello cpp file. We could have more files here just added after the space like hello maybe console, uh, cpp maybe uh, style, cpp or other files. But for now Hello CPP is good enough, we don't need anything else. So when we execute the following command, cmake minus b and then tmp slash build, cmake will automatically detect a compiler and generate appropriate build system into an output directory called the build tree. In our case, this will be tmp slash build. Then we can execute the actual build stage with the following command. This kicks off all the steps outlined in the project file. In our case, it will be compilation and linking. The binary executable file will be produced in the same output directory. Let's see if it works. There it is, our first program compiled with C++. That was super easy, as is, it is a very portable approach. It will work exactly the same regardless if you're trying to compile on Linux, Windows or Mac OS. CMake, however, is capable of much more than simply building from static set of source files. It can build complex multi-element projects and manage the discovery and the download of dependencies needed by your project. Then it can automate all the post-build steps like testing, documenting, packaging, installing projects on target machines. It is truly a complete ecosystem that standardized the industry uh, for C++ developers with over 20 years of history. But there is a catch. There is always a catch, isn't there? So there are two issues. CMake simplifies many problems with domain-specific language. That isn't too difficult, but it has few quirks and limitations. They are quite easy to remember if you learn them. But this simplicity deceives developers into thinking that they can just use CMake without any effort simply by copying bits of code from the internet. This is true most of the time, until it's not. People spend then hours trying to debug what they did wrong, but they won't bother to read the manual end to end. There is a good reason for that, and that's the second issue. 
The documentation for CMake could be much better. Simply, there aren't enough examples and recommendations in the official reference. This is especially problematic because CMake supports multiple approaches to solve the same problem, and some of them work better when a consistent, clean and coherent process is needed. On top of that, CMake was heavily modernized over the years, especially lately. This is a good thing, but it means that a lot of resources out there blog posts, articles, Stack Overflow answers, and anything else is simply outdated. Very often solutions offered there aren't considered modern CMake and won't utilize the best practices. This is where my book comes in. It's a fresh and more complete take on CMake as an ecosystem tool. It covers all you need to know to create a professional project. I get it. It's over 400 pages. It might seem intimidating when you could just pop open a short article or watch a YouTube video. But here's the deal. Unlike videos or blog posts, this book actually takes time to explain the why, the reason, background behind choices. It is an end-to-end -end guide that promises not only to explain how to install and use CMake from the command line and what files are used by CMake projects, but it will also show you things like how to use CMake domain language without shooting yourself in the foot, how to structure a C++ project in a file system and why this way, how you can consistently inspect the build environment and configure the build toolchain and why that might be important. All of this is the first part of the book. Second part will tell you how to correctly build projects with CMake, but we are not settling here for a bland, plain explanation. Uh-huh. Stuff here is important and distinguishes a proper C++ programmer from an amateur. You will learn how to work with all kinds of CMake targets, executables, libraries, custom commands, how they can modularize and speed up your build stage, and how they can perform advanced tasks, like for example, well, compiling protobuf contracts. There are two chapters on compilation and linking, and they are as thorough as possible. Of course, the book describes how to achieve those steps in CMake, but it also gives you a lot of contextual information. How these processes are performed, how they can configure, which preprocessor and optimizer options are most useful and when. How to build different types of libraries, when to enable position-independent code, what is it, and how it works in practice. How to deal with linking issues related to one definition rule, duplicated symbols, or even incorrect link order. How to structure your solution for testing and how that affects linking. Many of these topics are not covered in most C++ books, and you won't find them in other resources on CMake. So modern CMake for C++ takes a batteries included approach, because that's what you'll need when facing real world problems. Speaking of which, another huge topic is practical utilization of external dependencies. In the book, I'm explaining in depth how to find already installed dependency with CMake, how to use older PKG config tool to find legacy dependencies, and finally, how to use Git mechanisms like submodules and straight up pull libraries from GitHub to use them in your projects. After reading this book, you will have an understanding how to do the same with SVN, CVS, or even plain zip files available from an online URL. Third and last part teaches you how to automate different processes with CMake in a standardized way. It will tell you about automated testing. Why bother with it? How to make your project testable? How to use built-in ctest tool to get more advanced testing patterns for free? How to write tests with gtest and catch two unit testing frameworks, and how to generate HTML coverage reports that you can show to your manager as part of your promo doc. We will also automate other quality assurance processes like automated formatting and running static and dynamic checkers to perform program analysis with tools like Clang Tidy, uh, CPP Lint, CPP Check include what you use, link what you use, and Valgrind memcheck. The book also touches on documentation generated straight from source with Doxygen. You will see how to generate nice HTML pages with modern design that can be uploaded straight to your project's homepage. That's not all. 
there is a separate chapter on packaging and installing, which takes you through the convoluted process of preparing a package that can be used by other CMake projects if you need that. And also, how can you make your project install all the files to the end user system so they can have a clean and streamlined experience without a worry in the world? As a cherry on top, the final chapter is presenting a project that incorporates most of the techniques used in the book and provides justification for all the choices so you'll know exactly why things happened and the way they did. I'm not only discussing the project layout and describing every file, but I'm also explaining in which flow uh, they are partaking and how, building, testing, program analysis, installing and packaging, documentation, all of that is in that chapter. The book contains over 70 example projects that are available through GitHub and additionally comes with a Docker image that allows you to run everything without any problems at all. If CMake ever gave you a hard time, this book is a must have, especially if you're already using CMake professionally or thinking about getting into C++. There is nothing else like it out there and I wholeheartedly believe that you will have a lot of value out of it. Regardless, if you already know CMake or not. And now the promised surprise. The publisher provided me with a 25% discount if you use the code and buy the book in the next two weeks. Uh, you can do it on amazon.com or in the packed uh, official bookstore. So check out the description for links and the code to buy the book. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.